Yeah, I was just thinking about the um, well, the approach in the balance view training really isn't in any way <coughs> intellectual. Um, it's experiential. So what that means is that we really gain assurance and understanding of our own experience by looking at it as it actually is, rather than spending our time thinking about how we think it is, or thinking about how it was, or thinking about how it should be. And the way that we can look at our own experience directly is just to take a short moment, and you can do this right now, of just relaxing the need to describe anything that's going on for you. So just stop describing. And what remains when you stop describing? There's something that's naturally present. There's an alertness, an intelligence, an openness, the capacity to know that you can't turn off. So even when you stop describing, there's something that's still aware of everything that's going on. And uh, we can just call that open intelligence. And then, if I look at my own experience, what else can I say about it? <clears throat> I've been told many things about my experience. Um, and one of the things I was told was that um, I should be happy. And then following on from that were all of the ideas about, well, then I need to spend my time and my money and my energy um, being happy, or trying to work out what will make me happy. Um, but we bring it back here to the simplicity of what is actually going on cutting to the, the actual core of what our experience is. And we've identified that there's this open intelligence that's naturally present, and that's absolutely key that we all do that in our own experience. We identify um, this ground of experience, this ground of being. And every time that you just stop describing for a short moment, you allow yourself to recognize that it's still here. It hasn't gone anywhere since the last time we, we noticed that it was there. And then, well, what can I say then about my experience? What else can I say? Well, I'm experiencing lots of things right now. You know, I'm, I'm looking at all of you. I'm, I'm hearing the birds around me. I'm, I can hear this voice coming from somewhere. Um, <laughs> if I stop for a moment, then I can feel certain sensations, physical sensations. Um, if I look hard enough, I'm sure I could find some kind of emotion going on there. Maybe I'm happy or sad or bored or whatever it is. But there are all these different descriptions that are just uh, also naturally present. And what can I say about those? Not, not what other people have told me about them, but what can I say about them looking in my own experience? Well, um, is it possible to hold any of these experiences in place? So can you have one thought and hold on to that thought and fix it in place? Or is it a seamless flow of experience where we can't actually say where one thought ends and the next one begins? So just take a moment to look at your own experience. And when I do that, as soon as I stop, I'm aware of the birds singing over there and a little gurgling in my stomach. There's often a gurgling in my stomach or you know, and thoughts about anything can just pop into our mind stream. So what I can say, in, based on my own experience and looking at it clearly, is that there is this unpredictable, ceaseless flow of experience. And it's always changing. You know, it's never still, it's dynamic. But all the way through that experience of, of life, would be another way of putting that, is that there's something that's constant. And when we identify that again, so just stop all of the descriptions again, and there is that openness, there's that intelligence. It's, it's what's looking. And so in the Balance View training is a really simple practice and uh, suggestion that for short moments, repeated many times, until it becomes continuous and obvious at all times, bring the attention and the emphasis back to open intelligence allowing all of the data just to flow on by and be exactly as they are. And as I began to put that into practice, other things became clear to me in my own experience about my own experience. So all of the stories that I had about what life was about, 
um, primarily that um, it was about the pursuit of happiness, um, I began to see that all the ideas I had were like all of the other experiences. Um, and just to simplify it, we call all of it data. Like all of the descriptions is just data, it's a stream of data. And so the idea that um, I needed to be happy was just an idea that popped into my mind at certain times. And I'd been trained to focus in on certain descriptions, like that one, it was a very common one for me. You know, I, I should be happy. And then that would sometimes be followed by the thought, why am I not happy? Or it would be followed by the thought, oh, I am, I'm, God, I'm so happy. You know, what, how, can I, you know, how can I ensure that this happiness is always the case? And, um, and then the suffering begins. Because immediately what I'm trying to do is impossible. I'm either trying to hold in place this feeling of happiness, and I can look at my own experience throughout my life and can see, well, have I ever been able to maintain um, happiness? I might have been happy for a while, but at some point it always disappeared, even if I did manage to keep the circumstances very similar. So that's a great insight, and look at your own experience and see whether you've been able to remain happy all throughout your life. I've never met anyone that managed that. And then, um, so if I'm not happy, then well, what do I need to do about it? You know, something needs to change. And, and this is where the hard work and the suffering begins, because I need to find out what the problem is. Like, why am I not happy? I'm, I'm meant to be happy. That's what I've been told, and I'm not happy all of the time. So what do I do about it? I need to find out the cause of my unhappiness or my lack of happiness. And then I look in all of the ways that I've been told that I should find happiness. Um, and there's a, it's a very common list that most of us are familiar with. Um, physical health, I need to be healthy. Um, diet, I need to be eating good food. I need to have a good intimate relationship. Um, a good job or career where I feel valued and appreciated. And, um, and financial stability. Um, those are usually the main ones. And um, so what I need to do is I need to work on all of those descriptions to try and make them fit the idea I have of what will make me happy. And that's what I spent all of my time doing. Basically, I spent my time pursuing happiness. And sometimes I would find it. And that was great. That was fantastic. And all was well with the world. And then like a bar of slippery wet soap that I tried to hold on to, it would disappear again. Oh, God, I better start working again. Okay, different girlfriend, better physical health, more money, eating even better food, maybe I need to cut out sugar or something like that, and then I'll be happy. All right, start working at that, and I'd achieve that. You know, I'd wake up one morning and the sun would be shining and I'd be really happy. And I'd try and hold that in place. Okay, right, what, what is it that's making me happy? I need to hold this in place. And no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. So then on the game continued, well, why am I not able to hold it in place? What needs to change now? I need to do more running on the beach, more push-ups. I need to eat even better food. I've cut out sugar, maybe I need to cut out caffeine. That'll make me happy. And it's just this endless cycle. This is actually the cycle of suffering, the pursuit of happiness. And my experience has been in the, the short moments of actually allowing everything to be as it is. My thoughts of happiness, my thoughts of sadness, my thoughts of anything at all. In a short moment of just allowing them to be whatever they are, I discover the happiness that I was looking for. And that is the happiness of just being me. Just being me as I am. Without needing to change anything about myself without hoping there'll be a better me at some point in the future and then I can be happy. For short moments, just becoming completely accustomed to allowing myself to be as I am. All this unpredictable flow of experience, without looking for someone to blame for my happiness or unhappiness, without looking for causes and relationships to draw this picture of reality that seemed to, it just always felt so tense and limited, this way of behaving. 
because every time I relax, what I tap into is the complete openness and freedom of being that was what I was always looking for. And um, so I can say that my pursuit of happiness with its sometimes success, but its ultimate failure was fantastic because it showed me that there had to be something more. And I was looking for that in my life in many ways. Even whilst I was pursuing happiness in conventional and unconventional ways, I was always looking for something else. I knew there had to be some more information or knowledge out there about what's really going on here. And what, what's really going on here? And it was coming to the Balanced View training that um, really given these simple instructions to look at my own experience through short moments of just stopping all of the descriptions I began to see for myself what really is going on. That actually all that's going on is open intelligence, naturally present, shining forth all of this unpredictable data. And I can either struggle with the data by describing it, by trying to control it, manipulate it, make it look how I think it should look, or I can relax completely and enjoy everything as it is. Now, as I gain confidence in relying on open intelligence, all kinds of questions came up about how that should or might look. So the question about, um, well, the two related questions about taking action or not. And this is actually quite funny for me because my habit of thinking about things, of an intellectual approach, was so ingrained that um, I had recognized open intelligence, I was practicing short moments, and then the thought would come up, you know, but what happens if I'm in a situation and um, you know, I'm allowing everything to be as it is, and I can see somebody doing something that is really not acceptable or not of benefit, if I'm relying on open intelligence, how will I know what to do? Or if I'm relying on open intelligence, won't I just be you know, so comfortable with everything that I won't do anything? But this is not the practice. The practice is not intellectual, as I said at the beginning. The practice is, ex is experiential. So you continue to rely on open intelligence for short moments, and that will give you the answer to your question. In my case, that answer came very quickly. Um, I found myself um, on a busy street, and um, actually it was in, in Delhi, on a very busy street, I was walking along and enjoying open intelligence and, you know, it was great. It was all busy and yet somehow there was this openness that was naturally present. When just in front of me, um, probably about five, ten metres in front of me, I saw this big commotion. Big commotion. Something was going on. There was a big disturbance, people shouting and I could hear lots of angry voices. And I just sort of carried on walking, didn't really think about it. And then suddenly... Literally, right in front of me, there were these, this group of men fell out onto the street, literally fell out onto the road in front of me. And there, it, it was just, just incredible violence. There was one man who was basically being really badly beaten, really physically beaten, really, you know, full on, suddenly, right in front of me. And um, without thinking about it, um, I stepped into the middle of this crowd and I basically put my hand up and just went, no, in a really clear way. And they all stopped. <laughs> they all stopped. And they all backed off on this man. I had no idea what the story behind it was going on, but it was just clear that what was going on, you know, was really, really serious violence. And um, whatever he'd done, it didn't justify potentially killing him. And, um, and I stepped into the middle of the crowd. I was a bit more forceful than the no I just used there. But able to be there in such a powerful, open-hearted way. And, um, and it stopped. And it just stopped. And it was so powerful for me to see the power of open intelligence to take action when that was what was required. And um, and I think I'm probably one of the most cowardly people that I know. You know I, I do, do anything possible to avoid physical violence. That's not, not what I enjoy. It's not my background. 
And yet what I found was that by relying on open intelligence, when it was really required, there was this incredible power that was accessible to me without thinking about it. So the answer to when you'll know about when you need to take action or not will not come from you thinking about it. You will find yourself taking action when that is required through relying on open intelligence. And you'll find yourself not taking action and allowing the data to flow on by and knowing that nothing needs to be done through relying on open intelligence. And um, that approach I love because most of the time I find that actually I don't need to do or say anything. Um, with my thoughts of criticism and judgment about other people or wanting to tell other people what to do, all of these data I can allow to flow on by. And through allowing the data to flow on by, what I'm training up in is skillful discernment. Um, through seeing that I don't have to always express my oh-so-brilliant opinions, I'm training up in skillful discernment, skillful speech. I'm training up how to listen. I'm training up openness. And from that openness, beneficial qualities and actions flow spontaneously. So this is why we train up open intelligence. It's to access this power of great benefit, to see just how powerful we are. But that power doesn't need to be shouted about. It doesn't need to be even spoken about. And yet when you come here and you're with people here that are gentle and kind and very, very powerful, then you begin to see actually what that means and what it looks like. And I learned so much from being around other people who had more experience of relying on open intelligence than I did. I began to see practically what that meant and how it looked. And that meant that I didn't need to think about it. If you find yourself thinking about open intelligence, that's just another opportunity to relax and to actually recognize open intelligence as the basis of those thoughts. And then you'll know more and more for yourself. And that's the power of this training, really learning to trust our own wisdom and our own power.